Uh, hi, Emily. Hello, Maggie. How are you? Um, I'm all right. I'm a, I'm a down in Santa Cruz uh, at my parents' house. Because uh, Simone had the week off of school, and so she went to the Monterey Bay Aquarium this morning with my mom, and I worked right here in this room. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and you're in a new location, too. Yeah, I'm in my new office. We have the fifth in our series of pilgrimage journeys, and we have a, a different sort today. So um, should we let her in? Yeah. Do this thing? Give, give you some good Soulcast content here. Yeah, right. Hi, hey, Kathy. Kathy. Hello. Ooh, we have a naked person in the background. We do. <laughs> we do. A little person. <laughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how are you, Kathy? I'm doing fine. Um, it's nice to have you on the Soulcast. I believe this is your first appearance. Uh, yes, it is. Wow. I'm, I am honored. <laughs> we need like first appearance uh, a theme song. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I'll think on that. Okay, you do. You do well, welcome, Kathy. Thank you. You Thank are you here as part of our... Um, Lenten series on pilgrimage and a funny story on how you got here. We were workshopping this idea with Phil and we said, Phil, who in the congregation that you know has been on pilgrimage? And you were one of the people that he mentioned. And when we reached out to you, you said, that is not true. <laughs> <laughs> I have not been on an official pilgrimage. That's right. But in looking back on some of my trips, I realized that they've turned into they they did turn into a pilgrimage of sorts. And so we said that is an interesting concept to explore. And so that's why you're here. Well, yes, I was. I, Phil said something to me that you guys might might check up on me because I'd done pilgrimage, and I'm racking my brain to try <laughs> to think what he might have meant by that. But, uh, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I've, I haven't ever been on an intentional pilgrimage, like the, you know, you've had four great intentional, very amazing pilgrimages, but I've not ever done that. So, but I, you know, not everybody is able to do the, 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 those intentional, very physical, long, mm -hmm arduous um, trips, either for time reasons or for health reasons or whatever. I couldn't begin to do that at this point. But I, when I thought about it, I thought, you know, it really is true that if you, it, for me, a pilgrimage is a journey, but it doesn't have to be a physical, really, you know, a, a physical journey. Mm -hmm. It sometimes is, is an inward, a, a, an inward journey of that changes me, brings me closer to something is important. It gets me closer to a spiritual center somehow. And that has happened to me just in my travels when I start out being a tourist and I end up being a, a surprised by a pilgrimage moment. Hmm. So, so tell us about one of those moments. Do you have one in mind that? The one that really comes to mind to, for me, and it's different because it's, it's not really, well, it certainly is not a Christian site. It's very mm -hmm. spiritual, however, but it was two years ago, but a couple of years ago when I was able to go to Easter Island um, this had been a place I'd always wanted to go there, and I and it was because my mother was very very interested in Easter Island when the whole Contiki Thor Heyerdahl stuff happened. You know, the book came out in the late fifties or something, um, and she had always wanted to go there and was not ever able to. When I had the chance to go, it was really just something that was you know coming off my bucket list that I wanted to do. But when I got there. I was surprised at the emotional response I had to it. Mm. And I felt that my mother was right there with me mm. through the whole thing. And as, as I wandered around the island and we visited the sites, the 
the Moai, the big stone statues. And I start and I learned more about the history and the archaeological and anthropological cultural reasons, the history of these things. It's a very spiritual site um, for certainly for the native culture there, but I felt it. Mm -hmm. And I was astonished at how close it brought me to my mother, who has been gone for 10 years. Yeah. So it, yeah. It, that, that was very, uh, that was probably the, the biggest time when I have actually felt like I was on a pilgrimage while I was doing it, yeah. although it certainly hadn't started out that way. And like, I, I just wonder like if you brought a, like a certain presence to it yourself um, because you're, it had been so important to your mom. And I wonder if that's part of like the alchemy that that is a difference between pilgrimage and, and vacation, you know, um, mm -hmm. pilgrimage and tourism. Um, yeah, that's, I, I think that's probably true. Yes, there was much more an intentional thought about, I mean, I was clearly a tourist. I was right. <laughs> going there on a tour. But yeah, I, I had more of a reason to go. Mm -hmm. And when I, when I think about some of the other times, I mean, I visit churches all over. Every place I go, I'm always, you know, oh, there's a church. Let's go mm -hmm. see what's in there. And sometimes I get a, a, you know, I have a real spiritual response to them. But it's not exactly the same as if I'm going because there's something specific that is drawing me there, mm -hmm. which certainly happened in Easter Island and it's happened in the other place that I, that always does it for me is Bishop's Ranch. Mm. I, you know, if I really decided that every time I went to Bishop's Ranch, it was a pilgrimage, I've been there a lot, but yeah. it was very important to my husband in, um, and, and us both as we kind of spent a lot of time there with youth groups before we got married even. And then, mm -hmm. and so every time I go, if I wander in the hills and hit some of the, you know, the peace flags and the, some of the spiritual sites at, at the ranch, those are very important to me too. So maybe, and, and that is an intentional thing mm -hmm. as well. So yeah, I, the, maybe that's what makes it more of a, pilgrimage feel than just a I'm just a tourist checking yeah. out things <laughs> I love that accidental pilgrimages oh, yeah. good <laughs> that's really good yeah. Kathy do you play that piano behind you uh not very much okay. <laughs> not well Emily, do you use that fireplace that's behind you? <laughs> yeah, it's actually going right now. It's a, it's a, yeah. a, a like a gas powered one. Nice. <laughs> uh, do you read those books behind you, Maggie? <laughs> no, never. <laughs> never cracked a spy yeah. on a single one. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all of our, it's our Zoom backgrounds. That we're right. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I read like half of them probably. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thanks so much, Kathy. You're very welcome. Yes. Thank you and your piano. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Gabby. Bye. Wow. All right. Well, that was uh, some cool wisdom and thoughts from Kathy. Yeah. Glad she was willing to come on. Oh, let me too. And it you just goes to show that you don't have to set aside six months to walk across the whole country to have this kind of experience, you know? Like if you have two weeks of vacation, like, it's still possible for you to have that kind of experience. Um, all right. Well, we have one more segment today, which is stories from the living waters. <laughs> um, so this week in the living waters on the living waters front, um, the video, the video has been dropped. It is live. However, it is a limited showing right now. Only if you attend one of the small group gatherings can you watch this video. Uh, so that's very exciting news. Uh, you can still sign up for a coffee gathering online or through the Pathfinder or in person on Sundays. 
Then uh, there's the prayer vigil, Monday Thursday, Thursday prayer vigil that's coming up. And um, this has not much to do with the Living Waters campaign, um, but some of the, um, uh, it's a time to pray for the needs of this place um, and the needs of the people around us. And we did see a link there between um, some of the, the, the things we're trying to work on in this campaign and the needs of those around us. So um, you can sign up to pray through the night on the Monday, Thursday through uh -oh. Good Friday. It's okay. Uh, and uh, you can also fill out like a prayer request card. Those are all in the narthex. Oh, the last thing is the second news newsletter has gone out and that has a list of all the projects and all the stuff that's kind of latent in this campaign. Um, so you can find that that should be in your inbox. So just make sure to check that out. That will have all the information you need. And that is the good news from the Living Waters. Awesome. So what, what is on tap, Emily? <laughs> oh, what's on tap? Um, we have uh, no adult formation for this Sunday or the following Sunday. Um, we got a couple weeks off. There's Sunday school. Yeah. Sunday school, 10, 10 a.m., grades pre-K through 12. Um, and also this Sunday coming up, April 3rd, we will be making the Paschal candle. So if you've ever been to All Souls on Easter or on any day that someone's being baptized or any funeral, you'll notice that there's like a really big white candle and that's called the Paschal candle or like the Easter candle. Um, and it is... Uh, something, a tradition of all souls that we make our own. So all the like stubs from all the candles throughout the year, they get melted down and we make it into one big candle and then it gets decorated for the, like the year. And then that candle will be present at every baptism, funeral and Easter service um, for this year until next Easter. Um, so if you want to participate in that, we are going to meet at three o'clock in the parish hall. And um, if you are or have children with you and they want to make their own little candle, we are also using the leftover wax to make our own candles that we can light in our homes um, and be reminded of our community at All Souls. So, Sweet. Yeah, please do join it's us. Extremely cool that we do this. Yeah, it's really cool. It's very unique too. Not many churches do it. Sweet. Yeah. You know, I was looking ahead on my on my notebook too, and um, we have an open house coming before we'll, we will record next week's soul cast. So oh, yeah. next Wednesday, April 6th, um, we will have an open house of Jordan Court available from 10 to 12. That just means you can drop by and tour the new offices, tour the labyrinth, um, we can tour the new terraces, all that kind of stuff. Um, anytime between, between 10 and 12, it's sort of a drop in. There's not going to be like, a docent we will not be touring you you can maybe we will a little bit but anyway um come on by a a anyone is welcome the next one after that is our date site uh oh april 10th from one to two uh just after the sunday morning services on palm sunday and then the next one i believe is april 26th um or i think it's the fit 25th, 25th. It's a Monday night. okay so we'll, we'll have more information on that coming soon. Yeah. But. It was also in last week's Pathfinder. Even better. It's in print that way. Mm -hmm. See it. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. That's it. That's all we got. That's all she wrote. That's all we got. Well, one more thing. One more thing, which is that if you want to be a reader in the um, Palm Sunday Passion Reading, because contact Holly Fraser. Yes. There, now I think that's it. Brought to you by LaCroix. And Whole Foods brand. Great from Santa.